Hello everyone, uh, this is Gunjan and uh, let's continue our revision uh, sessions. So in the last uh, video, we had discussed um, about the first chapter, nutrition in plants. And in today's video, we'll be revising the concepts for uh, second chapter, it's nutrition in animals. So let's see what, what we have got in this chapter. So basically we'll be dealing with uh, how different organisms or especially however how different um, animals uh, take in or consume uh, the food. We'll be discussing the digestion process in human beings. We'll be discussing uh, the digestion process in animals that uh, rely on grass. And uh, lastly, we'll be discussing uh, the digestion process in single cell uh, animals like amoeba. So these are the topics that, be, that we will be discussing today. So there are different ways to intake a food uh, based on the types of animals. Like human beings, we usually chew our food. There are certain species that uh, capture and swallow their food like uh, reptiles, especially, uh, especially like snake or pythons. Uh, then there are some birds who suck the nectar from a flower. So, like based on the different uh, types of animals, they have their own uh, different ways of intaking the food. So that's the first part and uh, now let's discuss uh, the digestion process in human beings. Now the digestion in human beings um, can be majorly classified into two main areas. Um, the first one we can say um, the elementary canal and the second part we can say the secretory glands. So what are what is the elementary canal and what are our secretory glands? Let's find out. So the elementary canal can be further divided into various parts. It starts with a buccal cavity. The next comes esophagus. The third we have our stomach. The fourth we have small intestine. Next we have the large intestine. And the last we have the rectum. So these are the classifications of uh, elementary canal and now we have different types of uh, secretory glands we call them uh, we have uh, salivary glands we have liver as uh, one of the biggest glands in our human body and then we have pancreas so we'll be discussing this um, these all components So as seen in this picture, um, we can say that the elementary canal starts with buccal cavity and in this cavity, uh, one of the glands uh, for secretion is used, the gland is called the salivary gland. The next part of our elementary canal is the esophagus and we'll be seeing the role of each of these components but I'm just giving you a highlight. So it starts with buccal cavity, um, here salivary gland is added, the food next reaches to the e esophagus, from esophagus it reaches to our stomach, from stomach it reaches to the small intestine. Now in small intestine, um, the secretory glands um, or the secretion of digestive juices are added from the liver and it is added from the pancreas. And now once the food is digested completely from small intestine, it moves to the large intestine. And then the waste product goes to the rectum and, it's, and it, it goes out of our body through the anus. So this is the complete cycle of uh, the digestion in, in, in a human body. So now let us um, discuss a bit in detail um, each of the components of uh, the elementary canal. So the intake of food starts with uh, the buccal cavity and uh, we call this process ingestion and in this process uh, the major role is provided by two, uh, two components of the buccal cavity. Um, one is our teeth, um, the other uh, role is played by our tongue. Uh, so the main role of teeth is to uh, crush the food particles, uh, larger food particles into smaller food particles um, 
and the role of tongue is to add saliva uh, to the food particles so in order to help us swallow our food uh, through the esophagus so these are um, the details at a very high level so let's see what happens um, in terms of teeth we have uh, this this diagram here which says there are four different types of uh, teeth according to their category and um, according to their category each of these uh, teeth has a different role uh, some are used to uh, bite something some are used to uh, crush something some are used to insert insert something so um, have a look at these types of uh, teeth and then we are moving to the uh, tongue section so what tongue does is um, it adds saliva uh, to the crushed food particles so it helps us to swallow our food and um, the benefit of adding saliva is uh, it can convert the starch into sugars so starch is nothing but carbohydrates so we can say that um, in the buccal cavity the digestion of carbohydrates is almost completed Right. So the digestion process of carbohydrates from getting converted into, into sugar is, is um, completed in the buccal cavity. And uh, as we move on, the next component is uh, esophagus or we, we call it the food pipe. So the um, what goes into this food pipe is it's, it just has to push the food downwards towards the stomach. Uh, and this is done by the movement of the walls of esophagus so you can say that um, food, food is pushed down by the movement of walls so the walls of uh, this esophagus is uh, in such a way that it helps to push the food down because that's the only way it will reach the stomach so that's the only only um, uh, details about esophagus the next component we have is stomach so it's it's a g like structure here and the walls are thick as compared to the esophagus so esophagus has their walls but they are not as as thick as the walls of the stomach so uh, the stomach uh, once once the food enters here in the stomach it it gets a secrets it's it, it get its secrets from from hydro, hydrochloric acid from mucus and other digestive juices as mentioned here so inside the stomach we, we have the secrets from a mucus hydrochloric acid and digestive juices so in case you are wondering what uh, what is the meaning of uh, secretes so secrets is nothing but uh, the process of producing and discharging so we can say instead of rather rather than saying producing and discharging hydrochloric acid we can say that the stomach secretes hydrochloric acid instead of saying um, producing and discharging mucus we can say that the stomach secretes mucus so secretes is the word um, for producing and discharging so stomach itself produces um, this this gland called mucus and hydrochloric acid it also has some digestive juices with it and then it releases in the stomach so this help to this helps us to digest our food and uh, we will be studying the acids um, in details in, in the let, later chapters so what it does is there are some certain worms or germs um, when we take our food so the this, this acid um, kills all those bacteria that enter along uh, with the food that we that we consume and uh, in, in the in the in the stomach component uh, as, as we had seen that in the buccal cavity the carbohydrates was getting converted to sugars or I can say that the carbohydrate was getting digested into sugar similarly in stomach the proteins are converted into simple substance so you can say that um, carbohydrates will be digested in my buccal cavity but proteins will be digested in my stomach right now let's move on to the next component um, it is called small intestine um, this this is a very complex component um, firstly it is very highly coiled uh, within within our body um, but it's so long that if you if you measure it will be more than our individual's height on an average um, a human has a height of around 1.8 meters or 1.7 meters uh, but as you can see the average um, length 
of small intestine is around 7.5 meters long and um, the name is small intestine but the name is given because of the width of the small intestine the large intestine is uh, pretty much broad as compared to the small intestine but lengthwise small intestine is very um, is very long now what happens in small intestine so it has the secretive juices um, from liver it has secretive juices from from pancreas and it, it has its own digestive juices so when all these three uh, get together they help to digest the food components so let's find out what happens in liver um, let's see uh, where the liver is located so as you can see in this diagram um, a bit in the left portion of the stomach we have uh, the liver located and uh, just below the stomach we have the pancreas located now one opening of the um, small intestine is in the stomach so the the food component that were present in stomach goes to the uh, small intestine but it uh, but, but the small intestine also has its uh, opening connected to the liver and pancreas so the digestive juices from liver uh, we call it uh, bile and the digestive juices from from pancreas we call it pancreatic juices both um, gets accumulated in um, the small intestine and it also has its own digestive juices so let's see um, as, as as i said like the liver um, is able to secrete uh, this ingredient called bile and uh, bile juice is stored in a particular component called gallbladder and the important role of bile is um, it helps in digesting the fats and same goes for the pancreas the pancreas uh, secretes the pancreatic juice and it helps to digest the carbohydrates fats and proteins so at, at this point just to revise just to get a quick recap so when the food is entered into into the buccal cavity the carbohydrates are started to get digested they are not completely digested they are starting to get digested when the food reaches the stomach the proteins are starting to digest they are again not completely digested so in the buccal cavity the carbohydrates are getting uh, started to digest when the food reaches the stomach the proteins are started to getting uh, digested but as the food moves on the small intestine to the end of small intestine the complete food gets digested so when i say the complete food get digested all the vitamins all the carbohydrates the fats the proteins they all get completely digested into the simpler uh, forms so let's see what what these forms are called so when the carbohydrates get broken into simpler form we call them sugar and they are converted into the glucose when the fats uh, do the same thing we call them they are converted into fatty acids or they are also known as glycerols when the proteins uh, gets dig digested they gets converted into simpler form called amino acids so now uh, once uh, food passes through the small intestine we can say that uh, the food is completely digested and it's ready to get used in our in, in our body but how does this, how does this happen so there is this process uh, process called absorption which occurs in the small intestine what happens is uh, within the small intestine there are a lot of finger like uh, structures uh, we call it villi uh, now villi is is a plural word as you can see Uh, the singular of villi would be a villus so each villus has a network of a uh, lot of blood vessels connected to it and as the food passes at, as the digested food passes into the small intestine it gets absorbed using this compound called villi and from villi uh, using the blood vessel uh, blood vessels it reaches to different organs of our body um, where where the uh, digested food is absorbed and there in that particular part it's get converted into more complex substance like proteins which are used by our by our body now a point to remember here is uh, you might be wondering like when the food was um, in stomach we said that um, the proteins were started to getting digested into simpler substance so at that point we had say that okay uh, the proteins are complex substance and it will get uh, started to convert into simpler substance but now here 
we are seeing that uh, this digested food will get converted into complex substance. So what's the difference between them? Well, the difference is the proteins that we receive from uh, as a part of our food cannot be used directly by our body. The, the proteins that, uh, that are used by our body will be created using uh, our blood vessels. So this protein is a bit different as compared to the proteins that we had intake. So that's the, that's the only uh, confusion um, uh, we have for, regarding the complex, simpler and again complex substance. Okay, uh, moving ahead, this process of, um, of, com of creating the complex substance from the digested food is called assimilation. And uh, this, uh, this does not happen only with the proteins, it, it happens with all the other food components. And, and as we can say that um, glucose again breaks down into carbon dioxide and water with the help of oxygen. So that's the reason we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide because of the process in the cells that glucose has to break down into carbon dioxide and water with the help of oxygen. Also we say that uh, the complete food gets digested in the small intestine but that doesn't mean that all of the food will get digested. What we meant to say that whatever part of the food that can be digested will get digested in the small intestine. But then there are some undigested food remains uh, even in the small intestine. Now this part is, is passed to the large intestine. So we move on to our next component. It's uh, large in intestine. And as we discussed earlier, large intestine is broader as compared to the small intestine. But we can say it's shorter as compared to uh, small intestine. Like uh, small intestine was around 7.5 meters long and uh, large intestine is around 1.5 meters long. So what happens in large intestine is uh, we, uh, the large intestine absorb um, water and uh, some salts from the undigested food. So even um, in the undigested food, um, there are certain things which are required by our body. Uh, we call them uh, water and salts. So these are uh, absorbed uh, in the large intestine. And then uh, the, the remaining matter um, is converted into semi-solid feces. And we call it, we call this matter as fecal matter. And it is removed from, from our body using anus. And this process is called ejection. So this, this process, um, is, is completed um, when the remaining part gets out of our body. So this was the entire um, digestion process in human beings. Again to summarize, um, let's see. The food enters into our body using buccal cavity. Um, here um, the food is converted into a small substance and with the help of teeth and tongue, um, a secret from salivary gland is added. Uh, we call it saliva. So saliva gets mixed with the food and it helps to convert carbohydrate into sugar. So you can say that in buccal cavity, the digestion process for carbohydrate has started. The food next reaches to esophagus. Here the food is pushed down towards our stomach. In stomach, um, we have the secrets from mucus. We have hydrochloric acid and other digestive juices which, which helps to digest the food. It also removes some of the bacteria that were entered in our food. And in, in stomach, the protein gets converted into simpler substance. So you can say that the digestion process for protein starts in the stomach. The food next moves from stomach to the small intestine. The small intestine receives its secrets from liver, from pancreas, and from uh, so that was a very complex uh, process of digestion in human body. Let's quickly recap what we have done so far. Uh, so the food enters into human body using buccal cavity. In the buccal cavity, uh, the teeth uh, and tongue plays an important role. Um, and using the saliva, uh, we can say that the digestion process of carbohydrates it started in the buccal cavity. Then the food moves on to esophagus. Here the food is pushed down towards the stomach. Uh, once the food reaches in stomach, 
we the stomach has uh, the mucus the hydrochloric acid and the digestive juices uh, using these acids um, some of the bacteria that had entered in, into our food uh, are killed here in the stomach and uh, the digestion process for protein starts in the stomach next the food moves on to the small intestine the small intestine gets its uh, secretes from liver the pancreas and uh, from its in its walls so using all these three secretive juices uh, it is able to completely digest the food and when when it reaches towards the end of the small intestine the food is completely digested meaning uh, the carbohydrates are, are converted into simpler uh, simpler components like glucose uh, the fats are converted into simpler substances like um, glycerols and fatty acids the proteins are con converted into simpler substances like amino acids so we have two major role here in the small intestine it gets secretes from liver and pancreas so now the liver has um, has this uh, juice called bile juice which which helps to uh, convert the fats into into simpler substances and this bile juice is stored into this component called gallbladder so now once the food is completely digested uh, towards the end of small intestine it is ready to get absorbed in our body and this process is called absorption uh, where the food components are ready uh, to get absorbed in the blood vessels this process has been called absorption uh, this becomes possible because of this uh, component called uh, villi uh, which is um, a finger like outgrowths in the small intestine so uh, once the food is absorbed in the blood vessels um, it reaches to the various organs of our body where they where they need certain proteins or vitamins or carbohydrates and again these simpler substances are converted into complex substances and this process is called assimilation now once that is completed uh, the remains or the undigested part of our food is passed on to the large intestine and the uh, the job of large intest intestine is to absorb water and salts from the undigested part and once that is absorbed um, the from from the undigested part we we have some fecal matter remains um, towards the end of the large intestine so it gets um, collected in, in, into the rectum and then it gets out of our body through anus so that's the complete uh, digestive process in humans so now let's look at the digest, uh, digestive process in uh, animals who rely on grass uh, the grass eating animals so the process is almost similar uh, with a minor change and let's see what what that is so you might have observed like um, animals like cow or buffalo as soon as you feed them they swallow their food very quickly and then when they're sitting idly uh, they they chew their food uh, again and again so what happens is uh, they have this ability to swallow the food quickly and um, it it reaches directly in the stomach uh, where this food is partially digested and um, the part of the stomach is called rumen and um, since uh, since this animals um, have this component called rumen uh, these animals are called ruminants and the process where the food is partially digested in the uh, rumen and once they are sitting idly and this curd or the partially digested food gets again uh, back to their to their mouth in in small lumps this process is called uh, rumination and and we can see this in this diagram um, the grass enters the mouth of a cow uh, we have a similar esophagus here um, and then as a part of the stomach we have this compound called rumen so when the the grass uh, which the cow it quickly gets to the rumen it's partially digested here and then it returns back to the mouth um, in small lumps and this process is called uh, rumination now now the grass um, is uh, is usually very rich in um, cellulose uh, but humans and some animals are not able to um, digest the cellulose directly uh, so in in the in in case of the grass eating animals in the rumen there are certain bacteria that stay in the rumen this bacteria helps to digest the cellulose and the animals get the nutritions from um, from the cellulose in this manner now the next uh, digestive process uh, we have is for unicellular organism called amoeba and uh, as you can see this is a sample structure of amoeba um, it's a single celled organism so you can say uh, 
there is a one cell here and the entire portion of it's again these are very microorganism components so you probably won't be able to see them with the naked eyes but this is what happens in in such organisms so we have this um, cell and um, we have the remaining portion of the body which we call it cytoplasm now this uh, organisms like amoeba has uh, vacuoles or or empty portions in the cytoplasm uh, as you can see this these are called um, vacuoles now the food is entered into this vacuole now how does food enter here it's an um, it's an interesting process so what amoeba can do is it can it can um, change its shape whenever it wishes so what what amoeba does is it it starts to push out its finger like structure um, these are called pseudopodia as mentioned here so it, it it's it are, it's like um, their false feet so as you can see here that there is a food particle present here and what amoeba does is it it is able to shape change its shape so that it engulfs this food particle completely and then once that is completed this food particle now becomes part of the food vacuole within this um, amoeba or microorganism and here in the food vacuole they have its uh, digestive juices which which helps it to digest the uh, a small food particle and once the digestion process is completed the undigested food gets out of the amoeba in a similar fashion so that's called the digested waste so this is how um, uh, the digestion process works in, in amoeba so that's all in this chapter uh, let's have a look at the keywords uh, that are important for this chapter so we know what is absorption um, as we are discussing the digestion process once the food is completely digested in the small intestine um, the blood vessel it is it is ready to get absorbed in the blood vessels so this process of absorbing the digested food into blood vessels is called absorption what is fatty acid so in the small intestine the complete digestion process is completed and the fats are converted into simple substance these are called fat, fatty acids and glycerols so uh, one of the simple substance uh, of fats is called fatty acids what is esophagus it's a part of the alimentary canal which helps to push the food downwards what is amino acid it's similar to the fatty acids but fat, fatty, fatty acids are converted from fats amino acids are converted from proteins what is a food vacuole as we just saw um, uh, in case of amoeba, uh, the food gets trapped into a food vacuole, uh, which is um, which is where the digestion starts. So that is a food vacuole. What is pancreas? Pancreas is located below the stomach, and it has the pancreatic juice, which helps in um, uh, digesting the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Amoeba is a single cellular microorganism. What is gallbladder? So if you remember that uh, the small intestine receives its secrets from liver, pancreas. So in liver, uh, there is this component called bile juice, uh, which helps in digesting the fats. So this bile juice gets stored into this structure called gallbladder. What is premolar? So just go through this uh, chapter and uh, in the portion of buccal cavity, you will see that there are various types of teeth. Um, one of the type is called premolar. We have assimilation. So what is assimilation? So once the food is absorbed in the blood vessels, it is the job of blood vessels to um, make it uh, possible to each of the organs of our body where they are again converted from simple to complex substance like proteins um, um, for, the, for our body to function properly. So this process is called assimilation. What is glycerol? As we already discussed, uh, when the fats are digested, it gets converted into fatty acids and glycerol. So glycerol is one of the component of digested fats. Pseudopodia, uh, it, it, uh, it, is in, it is a term related to the amoeba. So amoeba constantly changes its shape and size. So uh, pseudopodia is actually a two word, pseudo and podia. Pseudo means false, podia means legs. 
So it's like the false likes of amoeba. Bile, so again bile is a compound of liver. Incisor, it's a type of uh, teeth. Rumen, so rumen is where uh, it's a part of stomach in the grass eating animals where the food is partially digested and it is stored as cud and then it gets again uh, back to the uh, cattle's uh, mouth so they can chew it again. So rumen is a portion of the stomach. Next we have buccal cavity. Uh, this is the part of human body where the food is ingested. We have ingestion, the same, the process of entering food into our body is called ingestion. Ruminant, um, the animals that have rumen in the stomach are called ruminants. Canine, again, is a part of, uh, is a type of teeth. Liver, as we know, is a brown shaped part uh, in our body, which is the biggest gland in our human body. Rumination, the process of uh, partially digesting the food and again uh, uh, getting back to the mouth is called rumination. It happens only for the grass eating animals. Cellulose, it's a uh, rich ingredient in grass. Milk teeth are, is, are again a type of teeth. Salivary glands is a gland in um, the buccal cavity. It gets mixed to the food uh, and it helps to uh, to produce saliva, which helps to uh, digest the carbohydrates in buccal, buccal cavity. Digestion, the process of uh, creating simple substance from the complex substance, like the food, uh, like the glucose, like the carbohydrates. Uh, so, so digestion helps in converting the complex substance like carbohydrates, uh, fats uh, into, into simpler substance are called, uh, is, is called digestion. Molar is again a type of teeth. Willy is a finger-like extended part in the small intestine. Um, the basic um, part of willy is to extend the surface area which helps to absorb the digested food. Ejection is a process of uh, getting food out of our body. Uh, this is then uh, with the compound called anus. Permanent teeth we know is a type of teeth. And we have saliva, it's a part, it's a component generated from the salivary glands. So that's it about the second chapter, nutrition in animals.